think one of the fundamental things we all do as orthopedic surgeons is take care of fractures. And within pediatric orthopedics, that's certainly true. Probably the most common thing that we see as pediatric orthopedic surgeons are fractures. Children are inherently active. They are playing sports, they're riding bikes, they're doing all those things uh, that can sometimes make a fracture. So I think the most common pediatric fractures are fractures of the upper extremity. These would be the most common one being fractures about the wrist, and this typically occurs when a child falls onto an outstretched hand. There are fractures around the elbow, such as supracondylar fractures, which are also very common. Clavicle fractures are also very common in kids, especially as our teenage athletes begin to play higher level sports. They can also occur from falls, falls off a bike or falls off a roller blade. In the lower extremity, the most common fractures we see are fractures around the ankle. These occur typically, again, in our athletes with a twisting type injury. And then we're, we see all kinds of other fractures uh, in the hand and in the feet from sports and falls and things like that. So I think one of the challenges in pediatric fractures for, for parents and for us sometimes is you just don't know how bad it is. So your child takes a fall and they're limping and is that something that you put some ice on and wait till the morning? Is that something that you come see us for? Even as an orthopedic surgeon for 20 years or sometimes I can't take a look at a child without getting an x-ray and seeing if there's a fracture there or not. So I've seen very bad sprains that uh, look fine on the x-ray and I've seen some children with fractures that look pretty good when you look at them clinically. So I think the important thing is getting a diagnosis because there are certain fractures like those around the growth plate or those in the joint which can become worse with further activity. Uh, it's also painful for the child. So the longer a child walks on a fracture or plays with a fracture, the more pain that they're in. So. So I think it, there, I'd have a fairly low threshold to get it checked out. There's certainly peace of mind in seeing one of us getting an x-ray that looks fine and then knowing that it's nothing more serious. So unlike in adult orthopedics where women are more likely to have fractures in men because of a lot of things, primarily osteoporosis, in the pediatric literature, uh, boys are more likely to have uh, fractures in girls. I think traditionally it was thought because boys were more active than girls in sports and other activities, but I think with the recent boom in, in girls participating in all levels of sports, I think we're starting to see more equal rates of injury. Interestingly for us, we also see age-related variations. So we see a big spike around one to two years of age. We call them the early ambulators. They tend to be uh, fearless. They tend to not have good motor control. And so we see a spike around one to two when kids start walking. These are things like toddler's fractures or uh, what we call non-displaced femur fractures. These are common things in normal healthy kids that just happen when they start to ambulate. Another spike we see is around the adolescent years, and this correlates with not only sports participation, but also starting to get into some high-risk behaviors such as uh, recreational vehicles, driving, and those kind of things. So we see uh, different variations in age. Interestingly here, we have research, and one of the biggest drivers of pediatric fractures is temperature, believe it or not. So our peak uh, temperature for pediatric fractures is in the 70s. And we think when it's too hot, kids are either swimming or indoors, and when it's too cold, they're inside. But uh, we looked at all factors, and we looked at pediatric fractures from days of the week to school to precipitation, even to things like lunar phases. Some people think the lunar phase has something to do with human behavior. The most powerful driver of pediatric fractures is temperature. One of the advantages I have with pediatric orthopedists is kids inherently heal, and most kids do well. This is physiologic, I think, because their, their bodies are just revved up to grow and heal. They're able to grow deformities straight where adults can't do that. Also, kids just inherently want to heal. They want to be active. They want to get back to work. They want to get back to play. So it's, so it's very rewarding because kids just inherently want to get better on their own. So one of the questions I frequently get is, is my child more likely to break their bone again? And so I think most times, no, kids' bones will heal strong and they're really no more risks than they were before they got injured in the first place. One of the biggest drivers, I think, is risk behavior. So I have some patients who can manage to break a bone twice in the same summer, but that's really not related to their bone. It's related to their activity level and things like that. So, but no, I think most pediatric fractures heal well without long-term problems, and it's not a lifelong disability. We try to emphasize that early on, that this is a brief moment in time when they're going to be immobilized or being treated, but it's not a lifetime of treatment for this injury. One of the challenging things about pediatric fractures is there's a complete spectrum from the child who falls at the park and gets a small crack in their tibia or their shin bone to maybe the seven or eight year old who breaks their wrist playing baseball, I meaning their bones set or put in a cast, up until the 13 or 14 year old who's involved in a major, major motor vehicle collision or some other type of accident who ends up at the trauma center. We're fortunate that we as Campbell Clinic Orthopedists staff one of the busiest pediatric trauma centers in the country. So we're able to get the experience uh, doing some of the toughest trauma cases in the region or in the country, and then we can apply them to our everyday uh, fracture care for all of our patients regardless of where we see them.